Yes, so um, today we are beginning our new topic for the start of the new semester and the new topic is parabolas. So parabolas are graphs of quadratic functions. So we finished the semester at the end of last semester with our quadratic equations. So we reviewed all of our factorization, expansion, we learnt um, how to solve a quadratic equation by factorising and using the null factor law. We learnt how to complete the square and how that can be helpful for solving um, and also for factorising. Um, we learnt how to use the quadratic formula, which is actually, uh, from my opinion, the preferred method. If your quadratic doesn't factorise, straight to the quadratic formula. Um, we'll look in this topic how completing the square has a helpful is much more helpful with graphing. It's not really helpful with solving. Um, and uh, yeah, and we looked at some applications of quadratic um, equations. So we're going to continue on the quadratic theme for the first few weeks of semester two, looking at graphs of quadratics, okay, which are called, the shape of which are called parabolas. So we want to start this topic just by reviewing what is a quadratic function. And also this will require us to review some of our function notation that we introduced earlier in semester one as well. It's going to be really important through a number of the topics we do in semester two. So um, a quadratic function is one which can be written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a can't be zero. b and c can be zero, um, but a can't be zero. So for example, a quadratic function y equals x squared plus 2x plus 3 is the quadratic where a is 1, b is 2, and c is 3 y equals 2x squared minus 5 is the quadratic function where a is 2, b is 0, and c is negative 5. Sorry. Um, for example, the quadratic function where y equals uh, negative 3x plus uh, x squared, sorry, plus x, is the quadratic function where a is negative 3, b is 1, and c is 0. Okay. So the key thing in a quadratic function is that we have the highest power of x is 2. Immediately then we identify that it's quadratic. If we want to sketch its graph, we know it will be a parabola. If we want to solve it, we know we need to think about factorising or quadratic formula. Okay. Quadratic functions can be written in other forms. Okay, so we've seen um, the form that we get when we complete the square. We'll talk more about that in a couple of lessons' time. It's a really important form when we're graphing. Um, we could factor; it could be factorised. It's still a quadratic. Okay, but the point is that if we were to expand it out, no matter what form we start with, if we were to expand it all out, it's going to look like this. Okay, so for example, um, y equals x plus 3 times x minus 5 is a quadratic function because it can be expanded to x squared minus 2x minus 15. So where a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 15. y equals x plus 1 all squared minus 3, that's the version, the format we get when we um, complete the square. That's also a quadratic function because if we expand it out, the perfect square becomes x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then taking away 3 means we get x squared plus 2x minus 2. A is 1, B is 2, and C is negative 3. Um, and quadratic function x squared plus uh, 2x squared minus 5 is a quadratic function since it could be thought of as 2x squared plus 0x minus 5. Okay. When we draw any quadratic function, every single quadratic function, when we draw the graph, it will look like a parabola. So every single linear function we draw the graph, we get a straight line. Every single quadratic function, we get this shape called a parabola. Okay, and I've got a, a parabola pictured here. Um, so like all graphs, the parabola is the set of points that all fit that particular quadratic equation. So the graph that I've got drawn here is the graph of the function y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay? And we can see that this graph passes through the point 1, 9. Here's the point 1, 9. That's because when x equals 1, y equals 9 in this relationship. That's what a graph is, okay? It's a graphical picture of every single point on the Cartesian plane that fits this particular relationship, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. So for example, the point 1, 9 is on the graph because when we substitute x equals 1 into the equation, y is equal to 9. Similarly, the point 0, 4, that's on the graph because when we substitute x equals 0 into the equation, y is equal to 4. Negative, um, sorry, negative 1, 1. If we substitute negative 1 into the equation, we would get, let me write it over here, we're going to get y equals negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 4, and we get 1 uh, minus 4 plus 4, and so we get 1. And so therefore, when x equals negative 1, 
y equals positive 1 and therefore the graph goes through negative 1, 1. Okay? You could pick any point on the graph and follow the same logic. When x equals negative 4, y should equal positive 4. Okay? y equals negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 plus 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. Uh, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16 plus 4. So indeed it is 4. When x is negative 4, y is 4. Okay? So that's the nature of a graph and its equation. Every single point, and, and I'm not just talking about whole number points, you know, when x equals 1.7, we can work out what y is, and that will be a point on the parabola. Okay? All right, so let's think, uh, well, let's work our way through some examples. Uh, example 1. For the quadratic function y equals 3x squared plus 5x minus 7, find the value of y when x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so simple substitution y is going to be equal to 3 times negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 minus 7. Okay, negative 2 all squared is positive 4. 3 times positive 4 is 12. Uh, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And minus 7. 12 minus 10 is negative 2. Minus 7 is negative 9. Okay, so when x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to negative 9. That means graphically, the graph would pass through the point negative 2, negative 9. Okay. For the quadratic function, f of x equals x squared minus x plus 3, find f of 1 half. Okay, so this is our function notation. Okay, f of x. Okay, a function of x. We have a function of x that says that you take x squared, you subtract x, and then you add 3. Okay, we want to work out what will happen if we have a function of 1 half. So we're going to be replacing the x's with one half. Okay, so we get so f of one half means one half squared minus one half plus three. Okay, instead of it being a function of x, it now becomes a function of one half. The input of the function becomes one half. We do the function to one half. We square it, we subtract it, we add 3. Okay, let's evaluate that. So 1 half squared is 1 quarter, 1 squared on 2 squared, uh, minus 1 half plus 3. Let's get a common denominator so we can add and subtract all those things. Common denominator here is 4, so that's already got a denominator of 4. 1 quarter minus 2 quarters plus, now 3 is the same as 12 quarters. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 12 is 11. So 11 quarters. F of 1 half is equal to 11 quarters. What that tells us about the graph is when x equals 1 half, y is equal to 1 quarter. The graph goes through the point 1 half, sorry, 11 quarters. The graph goes through the point 1 half, 11 quarters. Okay, example 3. For the quadratic function y equals 2x squared plus 8x minus 9, find the value or values of x when y is equal to 15. Okay, so we're going to substitute y equals 15 goes into our equation and we can then find x. So we get 15 equals 2x squared plus 8x minus 9. So quadratic equation. We want to first of all make one side equal to 0 and see if we can factorise. So 2x squared plus 8x minus 9 minus 15 is minus 24. Okay, we now have a common factor. We're trying to factorise. The first thing you look for is common factors. There's a common factor of 2. We've got 0 on the other side, so we can divide both sides of the equation by 2. All right, and then we are looking for... Um, Um, we're looking for factors of negative 12 that add up to positive 4. Okay, so it's going to be 6 and 2. So we're going to need to have positive 6 and negative 2 so that we can add up to positive 4. And then we use our null factor law that says that if x plus 6 times x minus 2 is equal to 0, the only way that that can happen is if x plus 6 equals 0, which means that x equals negative 6, or if x minus 2 equals 0, which means that x equals and so we've got two values of x when y is equal to 15, which means if you think about the graph, the graph goes through two points, has two points with a y coordinate of 15, and that matches with what we know about a parabola. Okay? 
there's a point over here that's at 215 and there's the other point over here, the same y value that's at negative 615. Okay. Example 4. For the quadratic function f of x equals x squared minus x plus 7, find the value or values of x such that f of x equals 6. Okay, so in the previous example, we've replaced the x in the function with a value. This isn't doing that. We're not, we're not replacing anything in here. It's still f of x. So this is f of x, and we want that to be equal to 6. Okay, so I want to be clear about the difference between this is not f of 6, which would mean replacing all the x's with 6's, so that we get 6 squared minus 6 plus 7. This is f of x equal to 6. Okay, so we want to um, solve x squared minus x plus 7 equal to 6. So x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to 6. Okay, factors of 1 that add up to negative 1. Okay, well 1 times 1 doesn't add up to negative 1, so it doesn't factorise. And so therefore I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So remembering that our quadratic formula says that if ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, that means that x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so we're going to get x equals negative b, which in this case is going to be positive 1, plus or minus square root of b squared, so negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, and times c, which is 1, all over 2a. So we get 1 plus or minus, now we've got 1 minus 4 there, so that's negative 3 over 2, and we see we've got a big problem here, and so this actually doesn't have any solutions. So there are no values of x such that f of x equals 6. Okay, So that must mean that, for example, we have the parabola up here and y equals 6 down here. Okay, There are no, no x values which have a y value of 6 on this particular parabola. Example 5. Determine whether or not the point negative 231 lies on the parabola with the equation... Da, 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 da. Okay, so we want to know... When x equals negative 2, does y equal 31? Now, we've done this before in the linear equations, and I really want to stress this point. It is not correct, not mathematically correct, to substitute both x equals negative 2 and y equals 31 into this equation. You don't know that that's true. You're trying to see if that is true. So to decide whether or not this is true, you can do one of two things. You either let x equal negative 2 and see if that results in y equal 31 or you let y equal 31 and see if that means that x equals um, negative 2. Okay? You use one of the numbers and then solve the equation or, or evaluate the expression to see if the other, it, we, it results in the other number. Okay, it's really important. Okay, so in this instance, it's always going to be easier to substitute for x than y because we would have to solve a quadratic equation if we substituted for y. So we're going to have a look at when x is equal to negative 2, y is going to be 5 times negative 2 squared minus negative 2 plus 11. So that is 5 times 4 plus 2 plus 11. So that is 20 plus 13, 2 plus 11 is 13, and so it is 33. And so therefore this means that the graph, um, so the parabola passes through the point negative 230, sorry not 31, negative 233, not through the point negative 231. Okay, so it does not pass through the point negative 231. So if you start by uh, by saying that 5 times negative 2 squared minus negative 2 plus 11 equals 31, that's not a true true mathematical statement. Okay, so you can't make that assumption. You substitute one value in and show that whether or not it gives you the other value. Okay, so today's work is from a worksheet. 
um, which you should be able to access through Canvas. Um, and yeah, best of luck.